Hey beautiful people, how are you doing today? I'm Anka, welcome to Weld.com. Today we're going to be working on uh, 3 8 plate carbon steel. We're going to be doing a stick open root, 7018 fill and cap. We're going to be focusing on the grinding and prepping. I have a saying, if you take care of the metal, it will take care of you. So we're going to take one, prep it nice and clean, and, take, and use a grinding wheel and wire wheel all the way up to the cap and everything. Then the other one, all we're going to do is bevel it at 30 degrees and leave everything else on it and just use this all the way out. So at the end we're going to bend both these plates and we're going to show you why it's very important to take care of your base metal. Here's our coupons. One of them, this is going to be the bad one, so we're not going to do nothing. I'm not going to use a grinding wheel on this at all right now. We're just talking about mill scale and removing dross only right now. This one, I'm going to remove, remove mill scale about an inch on, inch back on both sides, on, this, on these sides too, and we're going to flip it over. I also do about an inch back right here. I use this quarter inch hard rock right here. It's for carbon steel or stainless. So we're going to be using this, uh, removing the mill scale and dross on these plates. All right, this is the way I like my coupon. So I always try to get all the mill scale off best as I can. So I left this right here to show. See how there's like a little bit of mill scale on? I try to get that off all the time, but we're beveling. So I know this is gonna come off as soon as I start beveling. I also like using the same wheel when I'm putting the bevel on. Uh, we're going to be doing a 35 degree angle. The total included angle is going to be 70 degrees. So I usually just get my angle established first. So we're shooting for 125. Damn, I am good, dude. So I like to do a little section and get my uh, degree dialed in. Then I'll just carry it all the way down. All right, I roughed it in with a whole quarter inch hard rock. I'm going to go ahead and use this tiger ball. It's 40 grit. I'm going to go ahead and fine tune this in and level it all out where it looks really good. That's it. I mean, look how good it looks. Everything's nice and even, nice level, and it's nice and uniform. So that's my method on putting a bubble on. Uh, that's how I like it. That's how I get really accurate with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue them same steps on this other half of the coupon. Then on the other one, the bad pieces, we're just gonna use this wheel. That's it, the quarter inch hard rock. I'm not gonna remove no mill scale. We're just putting a bubble on. That's it. All right, as you can see, this one looks way better. It's all cleaned up. Our sides are all cleaned up, all the plasma dross off. Uh, this one just beveled nice and clean right here. We left the mill scale on and also we got the plasma draws right here on the sides. And also I forgot to mention, we didn't clean the back side. There's also still draws right here. So let's go ahead and talk about our land. I like to run an eighth inch land and I like to use the same wheel, same wheel as I put my finish on these good pieces. I'm using this uh, Tiger Paul 40 grit and we're gonna go ahead and put our eighth inch land. All right, we're gonna start out with the good pieces. You want to make sure you're holding the, the grinder completely flat or you got to pay attention to what type of wheel you got to, you have. This one's tapered so I'm going to be kind of going like this. You got to make sure you remove that burr because it kind of tricks you. This is plate number one on the good piece. I'm going to go ahead and do all this all the way down. So on these bad coupons I'm going to use a hard rock so we can keep consistent all the way out. Alright here's the good piece. So we got this all cleaned up, all looking good. Everything's polished up the way I like it. Here's the bad piece. We left the mill scale on. I didn't take the burr off on the back side because it will remove that, remove, remove some of that mill scale. It will give us an advantage. So, and the dross is still there on the sides. See it? So right now we're ready to go ahead and tack it up with 6010. All right, we're gonna be running off his uh, Esau Brogue 180 ES. So we're gonna switch this over to 6010 and it's gotta be about 80 amps for me because I'm running eighth inch rod 6010. So before I hit, go ahead and put my spacer in there and, and tack it up, I always go like this. I put it together, then I start from right here, left to right, and look all the way down. My main, my main goal is try to keep everything consistent. I got a little, little happy with the grinder on the ends, but no big deal. Our tack's going to go in there and, and fill that up with no problem. Our main concern is right here, our root. If it's consistent, everything's going to stay the same. You're not going to have no surprises come at you. I like running an eighth inch spacer. So I want to make sure this is even, or split the difference, and I want to make sure this is even. So I just take an old 6 to 10 rod and just pack it together. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. I close my gap up. My, face, my spacer falls through. That means it's too loose. I like a tight eighth. So we check this one more time. We're good. We go ahead and pack it. All right, we're done with this. We're going to do the same thing on the bad plates. All right, we're good there. We're gonna go. Oh God, look what I did wrong. <laughs> I couldn't see the grind marks. So let's go ahead and clean this up. <laughs> oh, 
All right, we got this all tacked up. It's in the fixture. So I go ahead and switch out over to this eighth inch wheel. Why I use this is because it's nice and thin. It's not going to mess up my bevel. So I go ahead and grind, uh, grind this all completely silver. I don't like no black showing or, or no spatter. I do the same thing over here. Then at the end, right here, like where I'm going to tie in, I grind that until it's very thin. If I, I usually grind until I see blue metal. All right, here's a good one, bad one. We got them up here to compare them. So uh, you can see this one, it's not good. We didn't grind this, the spatter's all there, the smoke. We're gonna go ahead and put a restart on both of them. We're gonna go one inch, one inch in. We're gonna do them on both, the good one and bad one. The reason we're gonna do that is we're gonna show uh, by using abrasives, you'll have a better tie-in. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with the bad one. I'm using eighth inch, 6010. We're gonna go ahead and weld this. Just go ahead and start striking an arc and weld it all the way to here. And then we're gonna stop. We stopped right here because we're gonna make a restart right here. Normally I would grind this and feather it, but this is the bad plate. I'm showing you uh, what it's gonna look like when you don't have a good tie-in when you don't grind. So let's go ahead and just continue our welding. So when I go up here and prop, I make sure I'm comfortable. I start about half inch back and I'm going to long arc it a little bit. We'll strike my arc and long arc it and let, that, let this metal heat up a little bit in my rod. And right when I come to the end, I'm gonna push my, uh, my rod in a little bit because I'm trying to get a good tie-in, increase my chances of tie-in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of whip, whip and pause a little bit all the way down until we run out. I probably won't be able to finish this joint with this rod. Plate's getting a little warm. So I'll have to whip out here a little bit more. Come on, baby. There it is. All right, we're good on that. So there's test. Plate number one, complete. So I suspect that right here where we restarted that, it's gonna be a little, uh, not a good tie-in basically, good restart. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump over this one and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stop here, but we're gonna grind our restart. Then we're gonna go ahead and continue all the way down. Oh, spark, a hot spark. Come on, baby. So I'm gonna use my wire wheel. I'm gonna get rid of as much slag as I can and all the smoke and spatter. Then I switch over to eighth inch wheel. Then we're gonna feather our stop or feather our restart in. This is very important. This is going to make you or break you. Make you get that $30 an hour t job or not. I feathered the end really good. The reason is, is uh, you want that thin metal to melt away and it start tying into the thicker metal. Uh, if you didn't grind that away, it'll be thick and you want to have a good, nice tie in. You'll tell it's inconsistent. So we're going to go ahead and restart and just carry our weld all the way down to the end. And hopefully it looks good. So we're going to start about half inch back. Uh, warm up the tack and we're gonna come back and it's gonna start blowing through about an eighth inch before the end. Um, right before I get to the end, I kind of push on it to make sure it's gonna blow through. Push on the rod a little bit. All right, we just got done doing the good plate. We're gonna go spin this around and compare the both back sides. All right, here's the bad plate. That's a good plate. So we're gonna start with the bad plate first. Right here, I can see we got a little, little, tra uh, a little slag trapment. It's not, a, it's pretty good tie-in, but Right here, here, here's where we stopped that and restarted. You could tell we got lack of fusion, we got undercut and tie in, and we got lots of slag. Look at that slag. That's very bad. And we come down, we're all right. And right here at the end, see it? We can feather this in. This is the reason you got to feather your tacks in. And we got slag, and we're not tied in good. So let's go ahead and look at the good plate. So we feathered our tacks in. You could tell right here we're, we're grinding or we're, we're tied in pretty good. We come down, we can't tell where our restart's at, but I can. We got a little slight bump right there, but we're all good tied in. We come down here, we're good tied in there. That's just from me, the plate got hot. But we're good, nice tight end, we're not low right here. So we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around and I'm gonna show you how to prep for the next pass. Let's talk about the bad plate. So we're not gonna do nothing except use this, all right? So we can go ahead and just get the slag off best as we can. All right, so the good one, we're going to go ahead and wire wheel this, get all the smoke and spatter off as much as we can. Then I'm going to switch over to the eighth inch wheel. 
we're going to feather all our highs out. This right here where we started, and we're going to feather this out. Then I usually grind it until it's completely silver and black line. That's my way. I definitely do it when I'm doing a test. Then I take a wire wheel and wire wheel it, then I inspect it. Now, I usually overdo it on my route because that's where a lot of people can trap slag and you run over it with 7018. All right, yeah, so I got all the black spots out. I know all my slags out. If there's any black spots left, keep grinding. So we're good here. We're gonna go start on this plate. I like to run 330 seconds first. So I'm gonna aim for the bottom toe. This is nice and level all the way across. When I strike my arc and run my bead, it's gonna look level. It's not gonna look bumpy. See this right here? It's gonna have a bump right there. It's gonna look pregnant right here and fat because we're striking an arc and running. And it's gonna get fat right here. Then it's gonna come down and that's it. I'm gonna be using 332 on the first two passes. Uh, my fill, then I'm switching over to the eighth inch uh, bullet rod Fox EV50. And we're gonna do that all the way up to your cap, eighth inch also. All right, let's inspect this. So what we got here, we got a little high right here. So when I'm doing my cap, I expect it's gonna be have a little lump right here. It's gonna be convex. Uh, then we're going, we come down here where this restart is. It's kind of high right here. Had to change up my sequence. I usually do 330 seconds after the root. Then I jump over to eighth, do a quick fill pass. But this time I couldn't do that. I had to go to eighth on this bottom one, then switch over to 330 seconds because of this hump. It would have screwed me up. I mean, it screwed me up. And also I was trying point the rod up there or I was pointing the rod up there and I couldn't get in there fuse in good because there was a the valley was like really narrow when the valley's really narrow you're gonna trap slag you're gonna trap slag and it's not gonna fuse into the top plate um, we got a lot of smoke and spatter here we got a lot of tr slag right here on our toes that's not gonna burn out um, we got these BBs right here spatter um, that can cause you a failure on your test it can so let's go ahead and move on over this one. So I used a wire wheel and I also used a grinder. Everything was going smooth until I got to my, until I got to this pass, my plate got too hot because I was just running through it really quick. And uh, I didn't like how it laid. It, like, I didn't like how it laid and it got really hot right here and it started like just falling out the metal. So it got really low right here. So I just took the uh, eighth inch wheel and I just grinded this all back down to the same level as that. So when I run my bead, it's nice and consistent all the way through. As you can see, I mean, it's all clean here. I took my time, cleaned it, where our side's all clean so I don't get porosity. And also, big advantage with a grinder. See how that's humped up right there? I could take that and feather that down so when I put my cap on there, it's not gonna look hump up. It's gonna look nice and uniform. And if I have, like, I left this slag right here a little bit on, I left that there on purpose because I can take the grinder and grind a little groove and get rid of that slag. Um, that's what's good about the grinder. It's, your, like, it's like your best friend, it's your helper hand. So we're gonna go ahead and let these cool and we're gonna run a cap, a three bead cap with 7018, eighth inch on both of these. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start with my bottom bead, eighth inch. Go bottom bead, bottom bead, middle bead, middle bead. The only, one, only way I'm gonna clean it, this one, is with the, the wire wheel, the encapsulated wire wheel. That's all I'm doing in between passes. If I get porosity, I'll hit it with a, with an eighth inch wheel. Um, this, not doing nothing, right? In the third pass, I'm gonna walk away for five minutes, let it chill. The reason we gotta let it chill out is so we don't get undercut on that top toe of that weld. All right, we got them both welded up. Uh, this is the bad one, you can see. Uh, it's nice and straight, looks pretty good. Uh, the end's a little bit hot, kind of rushed through it, that's my fault. Right here, this is all clean. I mean, you don't see no spatter. This is how it should look when you take it up to an inspector. So we're going to cut out our restarts on both plates. Uh, here's our restarts. We're going to go about, about an inch and a half. That's going to be our root. And we're going to do another one about right here, inch and a half. One's going to be our face. We're going to do the same thing right here. This is going to be our root because it's a bad spot. We want to make sure our bad spots show. But we're going to do a face right here. 
I'm gonna take these down, get them all laid out, get them cut out with a cutoff wheel. I'll see you at the bender when they're ready to bend. Okay. All right, so I prepped them this way. So the first step, I cut off with a cutoff wheel right here. Second one, I used a hard rock right here, quarter inch. Uh, look how much grinding we did on this. It's still really good. That's why I use them. Then I did my finish work with a tiger paw. So let's go over to the bender and see what they do. All right, here's the bad coupons right here. Faces on your right and roots on the back. Uh, this would be a failure. It wouldn't even let you get to this point. It wouldn't even let you uh, do the inner passes. So let's go ahead and see if these bad boys fail. All right, this is a failure. This is why you always need to feather your uh, stops out. That's the main thing. Feather your stops out to have a good tie-in when you first start off. All right, let's move on to the face. All right, it's a definitely big old failed. So this is why we grind our starts and stops and grind all the slag off and get rid of all that slag with a wire wheel. Uh, definitely the main reason, so that's a fail. You can see that slag entrapment right there, that's from not getting all the slag out on your toes or on your cap, just running right over it, being in a hurry. So always use a grinding wheel and always use a wire wheel. Yeah. All right, let's go check out the good one. Hopefully it don't fail. All right, this is the route uh, we pass. It looks all good. That's why we always use a grinder, feather our uh, starts and restarts in. Same thing with the wire wheel. We remove all the slag off, any imperfections, got all the BBs off and spatter. So always use your stuff. Always use your hard rock, your cutoff wheel, and your wire wheel. Them are the three things that you always want to keep in hand next to you. Uh, I want to give a good shout out to MCR. These gloves have been holding up pretty good. I mean, you can tell I've been beating them to death. They're pretty good. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching Weld.com. I'm Man Cub, learning is key. See you guys next time.